Hey guys, what is going on? So I've got a special tutorial for you today. It's how to make objects float in your photos. All right guys, let's just get right into it. And as always, guys, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon if you like this tutorial and you wanna see more of them. All right, so getting an object to float in your hand is a pretty cool technique that a lot of people are using to show off a product or to show off an object. And it gives it a really cool quality because it's unnatural for an object to be floating off your hand, obviously. But then you have to think, how do you shoot a photo like that? So it creates more interest, especially because everyone has a camera nowadays and everyone's always wondering, well, how do you get that photo? So people instantly have this interest in a photo where an object is floating off your hand. It looks really cool. So the objects that we're gonna be floating today, I'm gonna use two because I wanna demonstrate two different techniques. So one is this pin. My brother's an artist and he produces artwork like this. He has lots of pins and I'm going to show you how to make this float. The second one are these pair of sunglasses. Now this is a little bit different because with the pin I'm going to have one point of contact to make it float whereas these sunglasses you want to get them in the right position so it's going to take more points of contact. Guys the brand of sunglasses I'm using today are Medicine Works. These sunglasses are rad. This company has an awesome message. Every pair of sunglasses that's sold they plant 10 trees. That's why we really like them. It's a company we work with and you know we want to give them some awesome shots which is why we're going to float them. So let me explain how this works. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to make the object float by putting some sort of string, fishing wire, or just like a small skinny piece of wire on the object itself and what that does is it allows you to float that off of the ceiling, off of a door jam, off of what I'm using here today is a C-stand. So I can put the C-stand anywhere. So any type of stand you can use to hold the string string which holds the object. So let's start with the pin. So with the pin I'm going to have one point of contact. What I'm going to do is I use a little piece of metal wire and I'm going to wrap it around a point of the pin that you can't see. So on a pin on the back there's a little piece that you can wrap the wire around and be completely hidden. On other objects the reason you're going to use fishing wire or a very skinny piece of metal is that it's so it blends in with the object. So whatever it is that you're using, try to use a very thin piece of fishing line or wire, but just make sure it's hidden so that on the object itself that you're gonna be taking a photograph of, you're not gonna see this wire wrapping around whatever the object is. That's a key ingredient here. Step two is that you have to hang this from something. If it's outdoors, maybe it's a tree. If you're inside, use ceiling, use something to attach it to, or you might have a stand like me, like a light stand, a C stand, or even something like an, a ladder that you can get higher than where the photograph is being taken so that you can get the object to float. So step three is now attaching it all together. So now that you have the wire wrapped on your object, do it in a way that you can position it right. So with the pen, it's just the one point of contact. We're gonna put that up and then at the top, I'm gonna just connect it to the C stand and now the pen is just floating in mid air. Okay, and the next part of this photograph is I need to get my camera on a tripod and I need to get it set up so that my focus is proper on the object itself. And once it's all set up, I can either get a friend to take the photo for me, or I can just set the camera on a timer. I'll put my hand exactly where I want it to go, and then just fire enough shots until you get the position of your hand and the object correct in the photo for what you're trying to do. All right, so with the sunglasses, it's a little bit different. So with the sunglasses, what you wanna do is because you're gonna have multiple points of contact. On these sunglasses, I have three points of contact. I'm gonna use those to get the sunglasses in position to where I have the angle proper that I can see exactly the way I want the sunglasses to be seen. So when you have your points of contact with an object like this, what you're gonna do is have them come up to a center point and from there you're gonna put a string to the top, to the stand, to the ceiling, whatever it is, so that you can float this object. And then from here it's the exact same process. You put your hand or whatever it is that you're floating above, you get your camera set up, and then you just start firing off shots until you get the photo you like. All right guys, so now your photo's taken. Pretty simple, right? When you think about it, it's a very easy process to make an object float above your hand. But now comes the fun part. You gotta edit out whatever it is that you're holding the object with. All right, so you could first go into Lightroom, do some edits, and then bring it into Photoshop, or you can bring it into Photoshop directly. My workflow personally is that I bring my photos into Lightroom, I do a color grade, I do an edit, now I'm ready to take out the string, I bring it over to Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I'm gonna use the clone tool. The clone tool is one of the coolest tools to use in Photoshop because you can do so much with it. It just makes a lot of different things disappear in the photo. You can tweak things, you can add things. I use the clone tool on every photo that I edit. So with your clone tool, there's a couple variances into how to make this work. So what the clone tool does is that you 
pick a point in the photo, and then when you take your brush and you start using it as a brush, it's gonna clone exactly from that point to this point. So as you move the brush up, it's cloning this section up. So the reason this works so well for taking out the string is that you can literally find a section next to the string and start cloning and just come right alongside it. And you're gonna have to play with this and tweak it. There's gonna be different things in the background that you might have to adjust where you're picking your clone source from. And it all just takes playing around with the clone tool. So the size of your brush matters and also the feathering of your brush. You can make it very hard. Here's an example. So if you make it really hard and you start cloning, what it's gonna do is create a hard edge. So it's just, it's just gonna be basically a circle, no feathering whatsoever. Now, if you take the feathering and go the other direction, it's gonna blend as much as possible around that brush. So it's just like using any other brush, the feathering, you're gonna wanna tweak it. I always start around 30%, and then from there, I'll adjust it to see how the scene is responding to the feathering of that tool. And I might go more feathering, less feathering. I'm gonna try different variances of feathering and keep going back and forth and painting out the line. So the process is simple. You just follow the string or the wire, whatever it is, and you brush out using the clone tool so that it mirrors exactly what's on the image. Now when you pull out of the photo and you finish this, it'll look like the wire's not even there and the object is now floating. So what you can do from here is now take that photo, bring it back into Lightroom, do some more tweaking if you want. You might have already done some tweaking before, it's up to you which workflow you wanna use. And now you have an awesome photo that shows an object floating. Super cool, right? Guys, we use this method all the time. We like to use this for different products that are sent to us if we wanna give the company a photo and we wanna show it off in a really cool way. You know, like a pair of sunglasses, we might be wearing them, but it's also cool to try something different, like say floating, so that we have something unique when we give it to the company. Go try floating objects. I'd love to see your results and what you come up with. Guys, put a link in the description below of your Instagram. I'd love to check it out. As always, make sure you subscribe. I'd love to know your thoughts on how I make objects float. Do you do it differently? So guys, subscribe. If you wanna see more of these tutorials, please let me know. I love creating this content for you guys. So let me know what you want in the comments below and I will see you on the next one.